Hello everyone, my name is Jordan and this is your weekly news report. So I apologize for not posting a video in the last couple of weeks. I have been traveling. I don't think I've been at home for the last three or four weekends. That being said, because I haven't posted a video in the last couple of weeks, we have so many headlines to run through and so much exciting news that has come up in the last few weeks. There are a couple cover reveals, book announcements, there's a book to movie adaptation related headline, so many things and I am so excited about every single one of them. And in addition to the headlines, I have three new releases I'm going to be talking about. Two of them come out this coming Tuesday, and one of them came out last Tuesday. I'm just including it in this news report because it's one of my favorite books of this year, and I really wanted to talk about it. So with all of that being said, let's get straight into this. The first headline I have is a cover reveal for The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. If you guys don't know who Erin Morgenstern is, she wrote this amazing little book right here called the Night Circus. It is one of the most magical and atmospheric books I have ever read. It has a phenomenal romance and it's just overall such a fantastic book. I don't know that Erin Morgenstern has any other books out and I don't think she's put out any books since the Night Circus so the fact that she's even coming out with a new book is so so exciting and this cover I love it so much. So here's the little brief synopsis we have of this book so far. It says, from the best-selling author of The Night Circus, a timeless love story set in a secret underground world, a place of pirates, painters, lovers, liars, and ships that sail upon a starless sea. Does that not sound so good? I have no doubt it's going to be just as magical and amazing as The Night Circus was. This book comes out on November 5th, so we still have a little bit of a long time to wait, but I have no doubt that every minute it's going to be worth it, and I cannot wait to have this book in my hands and to take photos of this gorgeous cover. The second headline I have is another cover reveal, this time for Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. If you guys haven't heard of Queen of Nothing, it is the third book in a series that I believe is called Folk of the Air by Holly Black. The first book is The Cruel Prince and the second book is The Wicked King. These books have gotten a lot of hype and a lot of fantastic reviews since they came out. I actually have read them. I have a full review up for The Wicked King, but if you're just looking for some quick thoughts, I did not like The Cruel Prince really all that much, but The Wicked King definitely improved upon a lot of the things that I thought were wrong with The Cruel Prince, and overall I enjoyed it a lot more even though I thought it had some flaws. Anyway, you can head to my review for more thoughts if you're interested in that, but Queen of Nothing comes out in January of 2020. January feels so far away. I was lucky enough to get an arc of The Wicked King, so I read it way back in May, so it's already been so long since I read that book. Now we have to wait even longer for Queen of Nothing. In terms of the cover, I personally am not a huge fan of it. I do like the color scheme and the overall design, but I think it's so different from the covers of the other books that it just doesn't really match at all. I mean, the font is the same, but the way it interacts with the background is different, and I'm just not a huge fan of that. I think it definitely gives clues as to what this book is going to be about, but I wish they had done a better job of matching it to the originals. Going off of that headline, we have the Barnes & Noble cover for Queen of Nothing for every book in this series. Series, Barnes & Noble has come up with an alternate cover. Usually it's black to the original cover's white and this book is no different. I do, as usual, like the Barnes & Noble cover better than the original, so you can bet that I'm going to be adding it to my collection. The next headline I have is a title reveal for Sarah J Mass's next book. If you guys didn't know, Sarah J Mass is in the midst of writing an adult series, so kind of new ground for her, although it's debatable whether Court of Thorns and Roses was adult or young adult. I personally feel it's adult, but that's personal opinion. Anyway, her next series is officially being marketed as adults. The first book is called House of Earth and Blood and the series as a whole is called Crescent City. I did read the synopsis and I'll leave the Goodreads link to the book down below and it seems like it's a mix of fantasy involving fairies and angels and a lot of other mythical creatures as well as a murder mystery and really interesting intrigue. So it might be something I pick up. I'm honestly a little bit over Sarah J Maas and her writing style at this point after the immense Throne of Glass series and A Court of Thorns and Roses. It's just a lot. Her writing can be a lot sometimes so I don't know I'll see if this book gets good reviews it does look really interesting though the title seems kind of generic and doesn't really make me excited but the synopsis looks really cool so I originally was thinking there was no way I was gonna pick it up but based on the synopsis it does look like something I might want to read and that I might enjoy so Sarah J Mass's books have been pretty hit or miss for me so maybe this one will be on the good side next headline I have is that Jay Kristoff announced a new novella coming from the Illuminae Files series so the Illuminae Files is this 
really epic and awesome trilogy that's told through files and emails and camera footage and just a lot of other really cool formats that you don't see a lot in other books. I loved that series. It had so much action and so many amazing characters. Aurora Rising is Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman's upcoming book that comes out, I believe, either this month or next month. I'm not entirely sure. But if you pre-order that book, then you will have access to Memento. So be sure to get on that if you're interested in the Illuminae files and are potentially interested in Amy and Jay's new book. It looks really, really good, by the way. I haven't read all that much about it, but I've seen good reviews and it looks awesome. Next up I have two Shatter Me reveals, two title reveals actually. We don't have covers for either of these things yet, but the next Shatter Me novellas title was revealed to be Reveal Me, and then the final book in the Shatter Me series was revealed to be Imagine Me. I have not read Defy Me yet, so I have no idea what either of these things mean, or I haven't read any kind of synopses or anything yet because I really need to read Defy Me. I'm way behind. I know I've been so on top of reading these books in the past, and I just have not read a lot recently and so now my TBR pile is slowly burying me. Anyway, I'm so excited for these books. I love this series. I love the characters in this series so, so much. So I'm definitely going to be continuing on. And I believe the novella is from Kenji's perspective. Kenji is my all-time favorite character from the Shatter Me world, so that makes me even more excited to read it. And the novella comes out on October 8th of this year, and then Imagine Me comes out on March 3rd of 2020, so just about a year away. The next headline I have is another cover reveal, this time for the long-awaited sequel of Children of Blood and Bone, Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. This cover is beautiful. I love the model. I love the style of it. The one thing that bothers me about this cover is that it is almost identical to the first cover, except that it's a model as opposed to an illustration. I think it would have been cool if they had changed it like they did and put the model in, but done some kind of different design to make it unique and really stand out. But I am so excited about this book. I cannot wait to read it. I think it comes out on November 5th, so only a few more months to wait. I definitely need to do a reread of Children of Blood and Bone first. It's one of my most anticipated books of this year. And you know what? I'm just gonna appreciate the beauty of the cover, even though it might be a little similar to the first one. The the next headline I have is that Becky Albertalli and Aisha Saeed announced that they are going to be co-writing a book. This will be Becky Albertalli's second co-writing project after What If It's Us, which she wrote with Adam Silvera. I have never heard of this other author before, but the book that they are writing together looks fantastic and looks so good and has immediately jumped to one of my most anticipated books. Basically, the article I read says that this story is about love, local activism, and navigating cross-cultural relationships. So not only does it sound like a super cute romance, but it also sounds like it is very relevant to today's times and probably has some really important themes within it. Becky Albertelli tends to do a great job of balancing those two things and making a very happy book while also creating a very meaningful story. So I'm definitely going to be reading this book. You should definitely check it out. And if you want to see a more full synopsis and more information, you can head to the link in my description where you can find the article where I found this headline. The book is called Yes, No, Maybe So, and it doesn't come out until February of 2020, so a long time to wait, but like many of the other books I've mentioned, I have no doubt that that wait is going to be worth it because these books all sound so good. And then the final headline I have is a casting announcement for P.S. I Still Love You, the second movie in the To All the Boys I've Loved Before trilogy, and it was recently announced that John Ambrose McLaren was going to be played by Jordan Fisher. I don't know much about Jordan Fisher. I believe he was on Disney Channel at one point, but I was a little bit disappointed in this casting. It's not at all how I pictured John Ambrose McLaren, and there was someone playing him in the first movie, I remember, and I really liked whoever it was that was playing him in the first movie, and I don't really understand why they had to change it and cast someone else, but that's just my opinion. I'm not gonna judge too quickly or too harshly since I haven't obviously seen Jordan Fisher in the role or really seen him act at all so it's gonna be interesting I'm keeping my hopes up and staying open so I'm very excited for PS I still love you regardless and we'll see if Jordan Fisher does a good job I certainly hope he does because John Ambrose McLaren is such an amazing character so we'll see we'll see how it goes but that is it for this week's headlines on to this week's new release I'm gonna be talking about the book that came out last week first and that book is if I'm being honest by Emily Wiberly and Austin Siegman Broca Emily and Austin are two 
of my favorite authors that they wrote Always Never Yours, which was one of my absolute favorite books of last year. And I read this book earlier this year. It's basically Mean Girls meets Taming of the Shrew. So it's this girl named Cameron who's kind of a mean girl at her school. She's really popular, can be a little too honest sometimes. She has a crush on this longtime friend of hers who at a point in the beginning of the story basically tells her she has to change if she wants a chance of being with him. So this book is her grappling with that. It's her dealing with family relationships, her finding an unlikely romance and discovering how to potentially develop and change while also not compromising who she is and keeping her honesty. I loved this book. Cameron was definitely a little bit annoying at first, but I loved her all the same because she's confident, she is mean, but that's okay. She does change over the course of the book, but she doesn't change so much that she's a completely different person by the end. I think Austin and Emily did a great job of maintaining the essence of Cameron while also having great character development over the course of the book. And of course, I loved the romance. It was so, so cute. I love these authors' books so, so much, and I definitely recommend, if I'm being honest, if you're looking for a light and fun summer read with a Slytherin main character because who doesn't like that? It also has a great cover. I didn't love the cover the first time I saw it, but the more I look at it, the more I like it. So I love this book and I'm so glad I have a hardcover. It's also really pretty underneath. It's black and has pink font. Anyway, I'm obsessed with this book. I also recreated the cover on Instagram, so go check that out if you're interested in seeing my rendition of this cover. The second new release for this week is a book that I haven't actually read yet, but that I've been so excited for, and that is Arusha and the Song of Death by Roshni Chokshi. This is the sequel to the first Arusha book whose title I am blanking on. This book is based on Hindu mythology, and Roshni Chokshi is one of my favorite writers. This book was published under Rick Riordan's imprint. It is so funny and so much fun to read, at least the first one was. I assume the second one is too. It's middle grade actually, but I highly recommend it regardless of your age because it's just such a fun book to read. It will put you in a good mood and make you smile and it's just, I just always want to hug these books and they're so good. I have no doubt I'm going to think the same thing of this and I'm definitely going to be reading it soon. And then the final new release we have for this week is another book I haven't read yet and that I don't actually own yet, but that I've been so excited for and that looks so good. And that is Hot Dog Girl by Jennifer Dugan. I don't know a whole lot about this book except that it's a girl-on-girl -girl romance that takes place in an amusement park or that is somehow based in an amusement park. And if that doesn't sound like the cutest summer contemporary you have ever heard of, I don't know what will. I need this book in my hands and I would love to read it for the summer or for the spring or because it's cute contemporary season, okay? I'm in the mood for contemporary romances right now and this one is definitely near the top of my list. So that is it for this week's news report. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, potentially learned something new from the headlines, or found a new book to read from the new releases. My name is Jordan. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Goodreads at Page Travels. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. It would mean a whole lot to me if you guys would subscribe and I will see you soon.